Hey guys, welcome to Source ADV. I'm Mark Jackson. As you can see behind me here, I've got a 2015 KTM 690 Enduro R that's been pretty adventurized. Uh, this is actually my dad's bike. Uh, he did the Colorado BDR on it. Good? Good? Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Cool. Good, yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, that's the old stage station. Uh, but the bike itself is really cool. And today I'll kind of show you some of the things about the bike, but also focus a lot on this Lynx R fairing. Uh, which I think is really a great product for anybody looking to do an ultralight build on any bike uh, KTM 690 DRZ DR any of those bikes XRs this thing really kind of adds a whole nother level of adventure worthiness to these bikes The bike's got a lot of other accessories on it, too. It's got black dog cycle work skid plate Which is pretty awesome for this bike uh, Although it does vibrate a fair amount Kind of sounds like a little bit of a guitar every once in a while. It's got these big foot peg extensions. We've got these uh, supported racks that come all the way down to where the passenger pegs used to mount. Those are really good because as everybody probably knows, uh, the gas tank, the composite gas tank on the 690 uh, just mounts with like basically four big bolts. And the more weight you put on the back of this bike, the more stress it puts on those mounting points. What else we got here? We got the Rotopax one gallon tank or 1.25 on top of this cool little tail mount rack. Um, this Rotopax is super important because this bike only has 3.2 gallons of gas. So to get it up to about 200 miles of range, you need that little Rotopax on the bike to make it more of a lightweight adventure bike. Um, we've also got the Renzaco seat, which is nice. Scott steering stabilizer, highway dirt bikes guards, and BRP rubber mounted uh, handlebars, highway dirt bikes dash here that could be used for something else. And this bike also has a lower temperature thermostat. But other than that, the main and most important thing is this Lynx R fairing. This thing is really cool because it does two or three main um, improvements to the bike for adventure riding which is one, an amazing amount of light. Uh, I'll show you that later in the video. It's, it's crazy how much light this thing produces. The other thing is that even in its low position, the, the fairing does a lot of good wind protection, but what's really cool about this Lynx R, oh, actually, I guess both the Lynx fairings, is that you just loosen those guys and then re-tighten them. And now you have even more wind protection on the bike. That's great if you, you know, you want to be doing some mixed use adventure touring, that sort of thing. The other thing that's really cool with this windscreen is that if you just pull these four bolts, one, two, three, and four, you can actually just remove these nuts all together and pull the windscreen off the bike completely, which I thought was really cool because, um, this is actually my dad's bike, but if this was my bike, most of the time I'd probably run it without the windscreen unless I was intentionally doing some very long adventure riding, like multi-day. But even doing BDRs or some, something like that, I probably would still just run this fairing right here and pull the windscreen off because it does, that is my one major complaint about this thing is that it does vibrate a lot. You can hear it a little bit there. Um, the third and final function that this fairing does really, really well is gives you some extra dash space. So in this case here, we've got the Garmin Cradle, which we'll show you later um, and how it works. We've got a 12 volt DC here that's for like heated gear, that sort of thing. And then on top of that, they've got some, two little USB ports for recharging things. So you could, you know, as you can see here, there's more space here, more space here. And as I'll talk about later, I, if, if this were my Lynx fairing, I did not install this. So if this were mine, I probably would have done a ram mount style cradle for the Garmin so that the, the Garmin could sit right here in portrait. There you go, charging. And if that 
was the case, you'd have even more space on this dash to mount more things, temperature gauge, a couple toggles for you know heated grips, that sort of thing. But overall, this fairing is amazing at what it does. It's pretty darn lightweight. I've actually taken this guy off and kind of held it in my hand. And it ends up being roughly, I would my guess would be like four to eight pounds for all of this stuff, including this guy. So you're really not adding a bunch of weight to the bike, which is nice. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about it, right, is that if you pull this windscreen off, you really could continue to do some pretty hard, not sorry, hard enduro is the wrong, wrong word, but you could do enduro riding in the woods on this and you wouldn't be too worried about scraping up this stuff. It's incredibly durable. This fiberglass shell and this composite dash are both incredibly durable. So it's a really cool product. Um, the wind protection is pretty darn good. I noticed like compared to the uh, Nomad with the KTM rally fairing, there's a little bit more buffeting. There's a little bit more of like kind of a slap 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 behind, behind the windscreen here. But it's, you know, light years better than just taking the wind fully in the face uh, with the stock headlight on this bike. So I think I have the stock headlight right over here. The stock headlight on the KTM 690 is not super light either. It's got a lot going on in it, way more than like the 500 DXC. My guess would be this weighs about two pounds. So you're probably only netting, uh, adding, you know, roughly four, maybe six pounds to the bike, to the front. You really don't notice this on the front of the bike at all. Um, so, you know, as far as an ultralight adventure build goes, this is a pretty good platform for for creating that lightweight bike that has a lot more wind protection, a lot more lighting, some areas for dog toggles and, and a dash and GPS mounting um, and anything else you need. So yeah, I am a huge fan of this, would highly promote it. I think if, as long as you have the right fender on the bike where this kind of thing settles into the bike, so you can put a, I think you can put a 14 to 16 fender on the newer EXCs that have the notch in it. As long as you have that fender on it, I actually really like the looks of the bike. Um, some people are not into it. I think it's, I think in person it looks really cool. And then especially when the lights are on, it looks really, really awesome. So yeah, I'll show you what that looks like. It's just got that kind of crazy kind of crystal blue look. Let's see here. Woo! There you go. And I'll show you what that looks like at, at night too. All right, so it's about 9.45 at night here in July, and I wanna show you guys just how good the light is on this Lynx R. It's uh, kinda crazy. It's a full moon, just about, so it's a little bit lighter than I would like, but um, I think you'll still get the effect here. So low beams on, I'm gonna turn the bike on. And we're gonna turn, turn it on. What I love about this Lynx light here is you can actually see that perfect line, right? Which really helps when you're turning. You can get a lot of visibility on the periphery of your turns. So this is a low beam, by the way. If I go high beam, check that out. I mean, it's basically daylight. It's pretty crazy. Here, so I'll take you for a little ride just so you can kind of get a sense of what it's like when you're actually moving. So here's high beam. Low beam, still pretty darn good. You get a little bit of shadow from the fender, which isn't terrible. High beam. Low beam. Look at that, look at how the light cuts. It's really cool. Ah, there's somebody coming. But I mean, it's, it's about as good as, as good as it gets for something that's not, you know, built for racing or whatever. So let's go ahead here. Awesome, oh, let's roll. So, that's low beam, that's high beam. Pretty darn good. Low beam, see plenty on the side of the road. High beam, basically daylight, pretty darn good. All right, so let's show you how the, uh, the Garmin cradle works. On this particular bike, you just, uh, Slide it on, 
Oops. If you're not fumbling like me. You slide it on. As you can see, the Garmin kicked on. That means that this cradle is powered at all times. The key is not on at the moment. Uh, so this one's just hardwired to the battery, uh, which is kind of nice. Like, you typically take these GPSs off, uh, you know, when you're whenever you're in, in somewhere so they don't just get stolen because they will get stolen and they're super easy to go on and off. I found that you can just tuck them right in your adventure bike big pocket. My only complaint about this Garmin Cradle here is that on this particular setup it's not tiltable in any way and it's also not rotatable. Go, you know, viewing this in landscape only is actually not that great for adventure riding because you want to be able to see as far ahead as you as you possibly can. And you also want to be able to have this, you know, about up here uh, for stand-up riding and tilt it over this way. Because if you look at it, you'll actually get a lot of glare when the, when the, if you're trying to look down on the GPS, especially in sunlight. So that's not too great. But at the end of the day, it's super, super solid. It's not going anywhere. You can still read the GPS, as, you know, if you're, you know, if you think you lost your track, you just sit back down for a second and take a look. It's not super bad, but I would have done a ram mount style like I had in the 500. been able to tilt and twist if I wanted to depending on what I was trying to get out of the GPS at the moment but at the end of the day still a really good mounting place uh, and the dash as a whole with the GPS makes a lot of sense it's just not great for stand-up riding yeah thank you for tuning in and watching this video uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos on ultralight adventuring. Um, I do occasional videos on my Tacoma, doing some modifications on that, and building out an ultimate uh, uh, single track kind of hard enduro uh, YZ250X, which is my weekend warrior. So yeah, and check out our website. There's a store on there where you can buy stuff on Amazon and that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, be safe out there. Enjoy the ride.